his nostrils twitching from a powerful, dusty smell of cement. His eyes adjusted to the sheer immensity of gray. Buildings met the ground in a single gray, gray color. He followed Palakeo, turned right on Humanova, through the roundabout at Narodny, continued on Perlova, right on Havelska, a wide boulevard with an outdoor farmer's market. Like most cities, it featured booths of the usual fruits and vegetables, handmade goods, and always, always, the poorly drawn portraits of John Lennon and Bob Marley. <laughs> most languages are at least somewhat decipherable. You can pick out roots of words in German, French, Italian, Japanese, but the Czech signs were full of Zs, punctuation accents, familiar letters and unfamiliar combinations. The word for restaurant was clearly restaura, A-C-E. How would you pronounce that? What was familiar was the strangeness. Another country, another assignment. Notepad, microcassette, timeout guide in the bag. Every fiber of his being was on record. He was once again walking microphone, attuned to faces, behavior, music, food, goods for sale. All of it was material. The morning was sunny, and he might have a new potential gig, which meant money. He knew the drill, learn the basic polite words first. Good morning, hello, thank you, I'm sorry. Wallet in the front pocket, bank ATMs for the best exchange rate. Seek out the shade, only tourists walk on the sunny side of the street. <laughs> Order what the locals are eating or drinking, even if it looks disgusting. If you need the street perspective, ask a cabbie, bartender, or sex worker. Act like a citizen of the world, don't wear the American flag. Who would do that? <laughs> Who would walk, who would travel thousands of miles to another country and then walk around with your own flag on your foot? Definitely a dick move. Avoid other Americans. You'll just get caught up in a stupid conversation about something back home. Especially now, following the 2003 invasion of Iraq, Americans were not popular overseas. We represented the world's overgrown child. A stumbling, obese cliche of capitalism, colonialism, racism, regime overthrow, mismanaged humanitarian efforts, and pop culture that poisoned everyone's minds. If someone asked if you're Canadian, you said maybe. <laughs> if they insisted that you're from America, you said San Francisco. <laughs> it played better. He turned left on Melantra Chova, a thoroughfare of stores and souvenir shops, and the pavement soon, soon, soon turned into cobblestones. Old Town, Stare Mesto. On one side, a quote, 100% Italian restaurant. The cobblestone suddenly gave way to a gaping hole in the street measuring several feet, and at the bottom, a pool of sewage water. No signs, no traffic cones, no sawhorses. In America, the hole would be roped off, plastered with signs and blinking lights. But America is litigious. People love to sue each other. Here in Prague, the message was simple. If you're stupid enough to fall into a hole, you deserve it. The cobblestones dead-ended at Kozna Street, a shop called Urpet Bohemia Crystal, and a competing Crystal World shop across the street. This must be a popular intersection, he thought. Perhaps Crystal Geeks come from all over Europe to fight for bargains between the two stores. Impassioned fans arguing and shouting, grappling in the street, struggling over ownership of a large crystal duck. <laughs> he continued down Kozna and came upon Eurytere Christofa. The shop was situated at a corner, swords and shields attached to the walls, medieval flags flying above the entrance. Thick wooden doors were propped open flanked by suits of armor, as if standing guard. Kind of odd, but hopefully inside was Keiko and the answer to his financial problems. He walked in and was confronted by a deadly, deadly arsenal straight from the Middle Ages. Double-edged axes, broadswords, crossbows, wooden poles tipped with vicious barbs, long-handled clubs with a spiked metal ball on a chain. One wall featured shelves of tiny medieval soldier figurines. If one were interested in maiming, killing, and beheading, this was your store. And underneath, playing softly in the background, Rhiannon by Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> what do you want? Growled the stocky man behind the counter. 
He wore wide suspenders with long hair and a beard, pounding something on an anvil with a large hammer. Mike got to the point. I'm here to see Keiko. Not here, grumbled the beast. Come back tomorrow. Am I in the right place? There is a Keiko who works here? The man turned away and resumed his pounding. Mike walked out. Jesus Christ, what sort of writing gig was this going to be? Sword and Dagger magazine? But the guy in London said he could make a lot of money. He'd come back tomorrow, which meant suddenly he had an entire day to kill. It had been 15 years since the Czech Velvet Revolution, and like many former Soviet cities, Prague exemplified the absurd collection of old Russia and modern Western culture. The amazing detailed architecture spared by Hitler's armies while on the sidewalks, Czech teenagers with t-shirts reading Harvard Athletics 1965 <laughs> relentlessly text messaged on their phones. He stopped at the astronomical clock where a crowd of tourists chatted amongst themselves. The famous clock struck on the hour and a hundred cameras clicked. Mike thought, ugh, why bother? Zillions of photos and articles were already published about this clock. Tourist trap, no story here. He could write this from home. No need to learn more. Fantastic, the man said loudly, slow clapping his hands, wearing a bright red soccer jersey with a Carlsberg beer logo. He turned to see if anyone heard him and spotted Mike. It's really boss, isn't it? Mike nodded. This your first time to Prague? He nodded again. Brilliant, we're from Liverpool. He gestured to his jersey as if the entire world instantly recognized it as a Liverpool team product. <laughs> I'm John, and this, I'm Rose. Pleased to meet you. You're American? What part of America are you from? He shook their hands. Best play it safe. I'm from California. <laughs> oh, that's priceless. We love America. Michael Jackson, law and order. The Simpsons. <laughs> she set up the side of her mouth, lighting a cigarette. What's that one of the man who always says, I pity the fool? The A-Team! He never misses it. It's his favorite show. What can I say? I love Mr. T. We met here. He was at a stag party. I was at my friend's hen party. I just flew here with me mates, find the nearest pub, getting totally pissed, and this hen party comes in. I see this bird. She's equally bladdered. We start talking. We got married a month later. We come here on holiday every year since. We go to the same pub every time. Mike excused himself. Mike excused himself and quickly walked away. That was ten minutes of his life that he never came back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>